I'd like to talk briefly about Climate Gate, which I think some somebody noticed this weekend. <coughs> weekend that the if you Google Climate Gate, you got more hits than if you Googled global warming. Anybody who's been following these guys, people like Michael Mann of Hockey Stick fame, ha has known that they are uh, con men and that a lot of what they do is uh, dishonest and fraudulent. Uh, so, but now we have confirmation of it in these emails and files that were either uh, released by a whistleblower from within the Climatic Research Unit at the University of East Anglia in Norwich, England, or uh, hacked. Now, the, the mainstream media, by the way, this scandal uh, would, have, would already be over if it were up to the mainstream media. What are some highlights of the ClimateGate scandal? I think with ClimateGate we're finding out what many people have suspected for a long time, uh, namely that scientific fraud is being committed uh, by some of the central figures, uh, scientific figures supporting the, the so-called global warming consensus and central figures at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that provides the official reports that the U.S. government and uh, the Kyoto Global Warming Treaty process rely upon uh, to uh, promote their agenda. Why has the media been trying so hard to hide this story? Is it not newsworthy? Uh, I think that the mainstream media is, uh, as part of the establishment, has bought into the, the global warming consensus and uh, they are going to do everything they can to explain this scandal away. It is not going to work because of bloggers and uh, independent uh, people and reporters digging into this in, on the internet. And, and so it's not going to go away, but they're going to try to bury it. And it, it's because it's, it's an attack on the establishment. It's an attack on uh, the people who know better, the people who, should, who want to tell us uh, how much energy to use and what kind of energy to use and how we should live our lives. And so it's a real threat to to the established order. Some of the scientists in question whose emails were found are saying that the emails are taken out of context. What do you believe is the context here? Uh, yes, I, uh, I, I saw that immediately. They started saying, well, you're cherry picking a few nasty emails and you're taking some words out of context. I think it's worth looking at each one of those disputed emails and you'll see quite clearly what the context is. And if anything, it makes them look worse not better. Uh, these people are uh, con men and scoundrels. Regulation, government, taxes, it adds to the cost of doing business. And if you look at recent economics, it says that, yes, small business creates jobs, big business creates jobs. The most important thing in creating jobs is new business. But once you erect barriers to entry, which is what regulation does, which is what taxes does, which is even what handouts do because it helps the otherwise failing companies, bailouts do that, you are keeping out new entrants from coming in. Obama has sort of taken the, the last three months of George W. Bush, or I'll say the last year, of we are going to be pro-business, but very pro-government. And he has taken that to a new level. The pursuit of profit is noble, and it helps society to the degree that profit is hinged to what investors and what consumers want. But largely, increasingly now, profit is hinged to pleasing politics. Tell me a little bit more about your book. Well, Obamanomics is about how Barack Obama's big government policies actually end up serving the big businesses and the special interests that he said he was coming to Washington to battle. Whether it's global warming regulations, health care regulations, or just taxes and spending, the beneficiaries are the big businesses with the best lobbyists, and I report that uh, incident after incident throughout you the You talked world. about the basic laws of Obamanomics. What are a few of those laws? The, the first law is that when government is getting involved in an industry, the companies or the groups with the best lobbyists will get the most favorable legislative or regulatory lobbying. I say, he who has the best lobbyists wins. That's never going to be mom and pop. That's always going to be the yeah. biggest businesses. Also, there's the fact that government adds to the cost of doing business. Those costs fall more heavily on small business, are more bearable 
by big business. In addition, government grants an air of legitimacy to industries sometimes that don't deserve that legitimacy. Driving consumer confidence in the stock market should be the business of the companies trying to sell their stocks. And government also slows down the economy, makes it work less efficiently. That's good if you're the business that's already on the top of your industry. So all of these big government interventions, in short, end up benefiting the biggest, most well-connected businesses. What role has the mainstream media played in the success of Obamanomics thus far? Well, the, uh, we're talking about Obamanomics, the, the practice, not the practice. Obamanomics, the book. Yeah. Yeah. Obama, the practice of Obamanomics gets protected by the mainstream media because they seem to think that big government is about cracking down on big business excess. So they always pit it as it's regulators versus business, and hey, look, this business happens to even be supporting it, so that must mean there's consensus. So by perpetuating what I call the big myth, they're helping Obamanomics. The big myth is the myth that business wants to just be left alone. In this age of handouts and bailouts, that's obviously not true.